standing on the promises of God. As we come to worship here at Asbury United Methodist Church, I want to welcome you. I am Tom Van Zant, the pastor. I forgot something over here. Uh, here, and it's great to be able to worship with you uh, today. Uh, hey, we've been uh, we've been working working on getting our 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 visitor uh, things together, and so if you've been a uh, a, a visitor of the last couple months. If you go in the back, you, we have a green bag for you um, with some special uh, information in it and things like that. And so we want to invite you to, uh, to they'll, they'll be in the back right there. If you would like one of these uh, fashionable green reusable grocery bags with Asbury United Methodist uh, on it, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, our, our Church of the Wild uh, Sunday, and uh, we have a number of these, and you're welcome just to take one of them as kind of a, a, a way of uh, just doing your little part of not, uh, the, the idea is that you wouldn't use one of those plastic bags that become what we call urban tumbleweeds after a while. When you see them blowing down the road, that's, a, that's an urban tumbleweed. It's one of those plastic bags, and that, that, that this is something you can use over, I don't know about you, but I, I, I love having these bags around. I've got them everywhere. And so um, well, we, want to, we want to welcome you to take one of those. If, if you're a, a regular, if you've been here and you're a member and you've been here and you kind of know everything, there's no reason to take the one with the information in it. Uh, you can just take one of these. Um, if you want the information, you're welcome to it. It's the same information that's on our website. Also, I want to invite everybody to fill out the uh, green card, which I've already lost. That green card that's in your bulletin, and that you know, goes can be put in the offering plate when it's done. And we have in here uh, our beginning orders for Pentecost geraniums, uh, and you could fill those out. And that if, if, if you put it in the offering plate, fold it and put it in. Otherwise, drop it by the office or uh, make sure somebody gets it in, in the back. That's an awful lot of announcements. That's an awful lot of announcements. But, but the most important one is, it is Fifth Sunday, so we didn't have an 8 o'clock service this morning, and we have, uh, we have dinner afterward, potluck dinner afterward. Even if you didn't bring a pot, you can come and take your luck uh, out in the back and uh, after service so that we can all eat together and have a great time of fellowship. Um, I'm going to invite you now. As we, uh, as we stand, if you're able, as we join in the Apostles' Creed, uh, I invite you to join with me in this um, historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And God, we pray for your Holy Spirit to descend upon us here. As we come to worship you, we pray that our, our hearts might receive that, that gift of your Spirit, that we might be transformed into disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ. It's in his name we come to worship. Amen.
Amen. I invite you now to turn to your neighbor and extend the right hand of fellowship. Good morning. Our Kathy is in St. Louis for the symphony uh, performing Swan Lake, so she's not here. And Mark Gideon is uh, visiting family away, so here I am. <laughs> Jim, in case you don't know my name, it's Jim Wilson. And if you all stand, and uh, hymn number 145, Morning Has Broken. Except for the children, man up for story arm. Hey guys, how are you doing? We're gonna sit down on this step. Oh, thanks. No, uh, that was. Um, we'll put that here. That's a reminder. Is there room for room for all of us here? Sure. I'm gonna sit down here. Okay. Look. Do you ever buy anything in a store? Yeah. And look on the outside. The, yeah, there, it's pictures. There are flowers in this bag. What? Well, hold on. Don't give away my children's sermon yet. 
Hold on, I don't. You got you, you don't want to shout the. You don't want to shout the punchline to the joke, right? And that somebody's telling the joke. Okay, here I'm going to give you some flowers. You want to see if there? There's a flower. Does that look like a flower to you? There's a flower. There's a flower. You like a flower? Do you like flowers? Do you like flowers here? Yeah, there's those are some there's some flowers. There. You give you give you a whole bunch of flowers. They're they're actually a what? They're a seed. Yeah, but they're flowers. It says on the outside of the package that's a flower. They smell good? No, but that's what they what? what they will soon turn into. That's what they'll soon turn into. Food. Whatever I mean by food, it means you need to give them water and sun because they take that and make it into food. So you could like spit on them and hold them up? <laughs> oh, well, that was water and sun. Oh, okay. Oh, good. Yeah, fish water. Yeah. Hey, oh, so it's, the, so they aren't just like this. You've got to do some things to them, right? To help them. You know, the Bible talks a lot about seeds in the Bible. There's a lot of seed things in the Bible. Uh, there, there's about, about how our lives are soil sometimes. We put seeds in soil, and what do they do when you put them in the soil and you give them a little bit of water? What do they do? They Starts with a G and ends with an R-O-W. Grow. Yes, you did a nice job. <clears throat> they grow, and then if they grow a little bit, what do they look like? They look like this, and then eventually they'll look like that, right? Yeah, yeah. And with as much as we've dropped up here, we might get some of the front of the sanctuary next Sunday. Right? That'll be exciting. Hey, they said, how, what, what in the world does this have to do with the Bible? Well, here, here. I knew you'd be here to help me out. I think it means, like, everybody has a starting point. But whenever you get older, you start to bloom like a flower. And like your heart. Sometimes it can be, like, crumbled up at first, but soon it starts blooming, and then it can be kind. All right. Can we get an amen? amen? Let's stand up and pray. That's a great children's sermon. I'm glad I didn't even... See, Janice, I didn't even have to do the children's sermon today. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's all stand up. I know it's going to be hard to hold hands with those. We can just stand in a circle. You could just... Here, we could put it back in this. Put it back in this. <clears throat> no, put it back in here. Okay, oh well, that didn't work. Those are stuck. They're going to grow in your hand like that. I hear, my, I was told that if you eat the, um, eat the seeds from your, um, from your watermelon, they, that the vines will grow at your ears. No, that, my grandma lied to me? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> How are you doing? Because their seeds are edible, you, they think a watermelon is going to grow inside of you. Right. Right. Oh. No, you can just come here. We're going to hold hands. Just hold hands right where you are. That sounds good. Thank you. How are you guys doing? You know what? This is like regular church. It gets bigger as we start, as we keep going. God, we, <laughs> God, we are thankful for the seeds of faith that you plant inside us and the watering that comes from your Holy Spirit. And I'm thankful for these children that, we might, um, that they might continue to grow in your love and your grace, that they might be the, the beautiful flowers of your field. God, it's in your Son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. And all God's children said... Amen. Amen. Amen.
creation is at peace, and, and sometimes we forget that because in, in our world sometimes when we look at the news or sometimes when we think of it, we, we feel a lot of disruption and sometimes we feel God is distant. But the good news is Jesus Christ came to this earth and sits and lives and reigns right with us. And that we can be part of that kingdom. And part of our response to being part of that kingdom is bringing ourselves to worship and sharing our tithes and our offerings. God, how great you are, and all creation that comes together and, and, and gives us life and sustains us, and, and the joy and the hope that we can look around and just, and just feel and be a part that, that comes into our soul and brings us back together. We bring these offerings to you as a response to that abundance and that joy that comes from being part of your creation. We pray for your blessing upon our lives that we might continue to grow in love and godliness and on these offerings that they might be used in a way that helps us to reach out to the world with this message of hope. It's in your son Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you remain standing, if you can, hymn number 144. 
This is my father's world. Except for Janice. <laughs> Good morning. Um, the scripture reading today is from Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 30. God spoke, Let us make human beings in our image, make them reflecting our nature, so that they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of earth. God created human beings. He created them godlike, reflecting God's nature. He created them male and female. God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill earth, take charge. Be responsible for fish in the sea and birds in the air, for every living thing that moves on the face of earth. Then God said, I've given you every sort of seed-bearing plant on earth and every kind of fruit-bearing tree given them to you for food, to all animals and all birds, everything that moves and breathes. I give whatever grows out of the ground for food. And there it was. God looked over everything he had made. It was so good, so very good. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. There is a major event going on in the world right now, especially here in Missouri. This is the major time for bird migration. In the next, er, the last week of April, the first two weeks of May are considered the peak time of bird migration. These birds are coming back from Central America and South America, where they've spent the winter. Hundreds of thousands of birds are going to be coming through Missouri in these next couple of weeks. Some of them are returning to stay here in Missouri, where they're going to nest and grow their young and then move, go back to Central and South America. Some just stop over here and eat and fuel up and then fly further north into uh, the northern U.S. and Canada and even to Alaska. We're in, the, we're in the peak spot of the state because we're between two major flyways. I could talk forever about this. I have talked forever about this. But you may wonder why I'm wearing all this stuff. Okay. But um, 
These are my tools I have for bird watching. I wear a hat to shade my eyes so I can find the birds easier. Now with leaves on the trees, it's harder to find, and many of them are way up in the very top branches. So shading my eyes helps me spot movement, and then I use my binoculars. My binoculars are my real eyes when it comes to bird watching because they can see a lot further than my eyes can in a lot more detail. And many of these birds are only three, four inches long and just weigh like a handful of paper clips. And they're up in the tops of the trees, so you have to use your eyes to be able to see. I also use my ears to hear because sometimes we don't see the birds, but we can hear them. And they all have unique songs. And so if you know the songs, you can identify what the bird is in the top of the tree without actually being able to see it. Now, uh, I do not claim to be able to identify every bird by song. So this is why I carry this with me when I bird. Because I, can, I have bird apps that can play a song and help me confirm a song, or I can actually, in some apps, you can record it, record the song, and it will t give you three or four choices about what it would probably is. So it also uh, helps me identify, these apps do, identify the birds. If I can see it has a certain kind of bill or has a certain color, it'll give me an idea. I also carry a, a bird guide with me, field guide, because maybe it's just because I'm old, but uh, I can use, I can find the bird faster sometimes in here than I can on the app. Or if I know it's a woodpecker, I can go and look at all the different woodpeckers and identify which it is. I also carry, yeah, it's, it's an ordeal to go on a bird trip. Uh, <laughs> I also carry a journal with me so that I can write down what I see, where, and when, and I go back and look at it. You wouldn't believe the stack of journals I have with just, I saw a red-eyed vireo on this date at this place kind of thing. Now these tools are important, and I'm going to come back to them in just a little bit. But first, let's, let's have a brief word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day your beautiful creation that you said was very good. We ask that you open our hearts and minds and that we may hear what you want each of us to hear. In your holy name, amen. amen. Okay. I'm going to take this off. <laughs> I'm a biologist by training. I have never seen a conflict between the science and between creation. In fact, my science has actually opened my eyes to the wonder of the world, the awe, the excitement, the beauty. If we read in Genesis that it was created by God, then creation is sacred. Now, I'm not talking about worshiping nature, but to treat it as sacred. In the Genesis version, the original Hebrew word for the part that says to tend and to till is shamar, okay, to tend and to till. However, in the Psalms, there are several places that this word shamar is used. In Psalm 16, it means to watch. In Psalm 17, they used it to mean to keep. In Psalm 86, it means preserve. And in Psalm 2, it means to serve. So the, when we say to till and to tend, we're actually the bigger, deeper meaning is to watch or preserve, to keep. According to Christine Waltner's Paintner, in, in her book called Earth, Our Original Monastery, she said natures were the first cathedrals and the first spiritual director. So think about it, they didn't have a Bible in the beginning. All they had was the created world. And so we have that created world that we can participate in and care for. 
In Celtic Christian tradition, it maintains that there are two major books of Revelation. One is the Bible, and the other is, I quote, the vast book of creation. God can speak to us through nature as well. Timothy Willard said in his book, The Beauty Chasers, Recapturing the Wonder of the Divine, he says, God speaks to us through beauty, mystery, wonder, awe, and the unknown. But if we want to hear him speak to us through the created world, we must get out in it. And that requires us to slow down. So this is very similar to what we've been talking about in the How to Pray study. We have to slow down, we have to listen, and we have to just contemplate, think about what we're doing. Well, we need to, slowing down sometimes is hard for, for many of us. And when we do, we need those tools, just like I need the tools for my bird watching. We need eyes to see. We need to look around. Spend some time looking at the details of a flower, looking at the details of a leaf on the front and the back. Look at a bee and watch a bee as it goes and collects pollen in a flower. Watch the flight of a the bird. They all fly a little differently if we pay attention. Uh, you know, as a kid, I liked watching the clouds. I could lay on my back and watch the clouds and look at shapes and look at colors of clouds. The stars, have we forgotten how to do that? We need ears to hear. <coughs> Excuse me. We need ears to hear, just like I do birding. In Job 12, verses 7 through 10, he says, but ask the animals, and they will teach you. The birds of the air, and they will tell you. Ask the plants of the earth, and they will teach you. And the fish of the sea will declare to you. Who among these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hands is the life of every living thing and the breath of every human being. We have to slow down, go outside, calm our minds, and that's the hardest part, is calming our minds, and get rid of the daily worries for a little bit and just listen. Listen for God to speak to us. Close our eyes, sometimes that helps, and to just listen to the birds, the wind, the insects. You may feel a sense of joy Get an idea, a thought, words of encouragement. God speaks to us. Or you may just get a sense of peace. In um, a book called The Nature Principle by Richard Lube, he tells the story of a therapist who was working with a veteran. And this veteran was angry. Every time he came to see her, he was his finch, clists were finch, fists were clenched. He would lean forward in his seat and he, he was yelling at her all the time, constantly yelling at her. Finally, she said, tell me about the last time you felt some peace. He thought a minute and then he started talking about riding his motorcycle out into the woods and setting up a tent and camping overnight. And she said, as he talked, all of a sudden he leaned back in his chair. He put his feet out in front of him and he put his arms behind his head and leaned back and was just talking in this very calm voice. Just the memory of going out and being in nature, in God's creation, gave him peace. It can do it for all of us. As we are outside, well, 
Sometimes when we come back in from outside, we need some resources to help us. What did we, what did we see or feel or hear? First of all, we can get that journal out and write down those thoughts. What, do, what did come to your mind when you heard that? We can use the resources, we can use our Bibles to confirm the thoughts we had, to guide us, to speak to us. Just like I use the field guide or the phone to confirm what I'm seeing and hearing with the birds. We can be thankful. Be thankful for what God has given us through his creation. So just for a few seconds here, I want you to think about a time when you were outside and felt peace or joy just from being where you were. I do see some smiles. So you're thinking of someplace fun, like the lake or the beach, I hope. Or maybe it's just your backyard. So God created creation for us. He created people, too. So therefore, people are sacred as well. In Luke 12, verses 22 through 27, he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of them. So you'll notice a few things in this scripture. One, that the ravens, they are fed by God. Okay. He takes care of them. He created the world to feed them. But it also says that people, we're more important than the birds. Now that doesn't mean that we shouldn't think about the birds okay, and the creation, but that we're more important. And so we need to focus on the people, too. Okay. We know the great requirement, Micah 6, 8. He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. How often do we do justice for people? How often do we do justice for creation? They both are created by God. They both deserve justice. Just as nature survives through interactions, the flowers won't reproduce without the pollinators. Okay? The pollinators won't live without the flowers. We, we won't live without trees. Trees provide so much oxygen and well, I love trees, too. I could go on about that. But nature needs each other in nature, just like people need each other. We need each other. We need those interactions. Do we help those other people and interact? I want to end with a quote by Anne Lamott in her book, Dusk, Night, Dawn, on Revival and Courage. And she says... Rooting ourselves in the earth that supports us leads to our being rooted in the faith that we are not alone, that we're connected to all of this. Amen. Would you join me in prayer? Creator God, we thank you for this earth that you have given us. And we thank you that it is good and it provides to creation, it provides to us.
We're thankful that you are present in the smallest creatures and the largest. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out your love that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. O oh God, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives, that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty and not destruction. Teach us to discover the worth of each little thing, the awe and beauty that it provides. We want to lift up those who are hurting, who are ill, who are feeling unloved, that they may feel your presence. And now we say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Friends, all of creation is being made over and over in God's love and God's grace. And we're part of that creation. And, and as Janice was talking about, God has given us the tools. So may you be people who can step forth in this life, embracing that new creation and that new hope, embracing that, that new idea that we can, we can grow into what into the beautiful things God has made us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I'm going to have us pause just a second, and we're going to say grace for the food we're about to receive, God, because we know that the abundance comes from you, and the hope comes from you, and we know that there are people in this world who will not eat a lunch with others. And we pray that we can find ways of feeding the world, because there are people who are going to be eating alone, even and are not going to be with others. And that fellowship we have is, is the thing that nourishes us most. And may we find ways of reaching out into this world so that we can make things new. It's in your Son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 